Hi there, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. This video is a shortened and edited version of a live that I did last week with my friend JC Gaspar. Now, JC is one of my favorite card makers, probably my favorite card maker, because of the dreamy way he creates cards with beautiful color. He always knocks it out of the park. So I asked him if he would go live with me and teach me some of his techniques and how he approaches creating beautiful colored florals. I love the unique cards that we created using a product that I never would have envisioned in this way. Please keep in mind that this is an edited shortened version of the full live replay. So it's a bit choppy. I apologize. It's the best I can do. However, I really encourage you to listen to the full replay because JC has so many great tips to share. We also talk about the upcoming Altenew Secret Garden Retreat that we're both teaching at and we're really excited about. So you might hear some mentions of it in this replay too. In fact, the inks that we use today are part of the kit for that event, but the dyes that we use are available already. It's an older product from Altenew. Keep in mind the techniques and tips that JC shares can be used with a variety of products. And finally, I apologize. We had intended to have JC full front and center in this video, but he had some tech issues with uh, his internet right before we went live. So his is a little bit blurry, but he taught me how to do the techniques and I show that today. In the future, we'll put him front and center. Also in this video, we're honored to have Bridget Casey from Altenew. She's one of my favorite people to work with also, so I'm glad she's here. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So honeydew okay. glow, yep. lemonade stand, uh, there's blush rose, blue horizon, teal That's tempest, and rhodolite. There we go. Perfect. Yep. And, you know, for the secret garden retreat, I was, I don't know about you, Jennifer, but I was like, how well, you know, you can't have flowers without some foliage, some greenery. So, you know, how are we, how are these going to work, yep. right, in a, in a, in a sort of palette, so... Yeah, um, we, I'm sure Jennifer just showed, yeah, the Blossom of Life die set. Um, fabulous looking die set. This Blossom of Life die set is already out. It's an older set from um, from Altenew. And it also has the hugs, big and thanks, and the shadow dies for those. So we're going to use this along with the new inks that he was talking about. These inks you get in the... Um, the upcoming Secret Garden event, which is in May. Is that right, Bridget? Yes, May 4th. So the Secret Garden event is an all day packed full of classes and JC is one of the teachers and so am I. And there's lots of great products on it. If you look in the description, there's a link and you can see what all the products are included in the class. You don't see the projects, but you see the products. And it's the, by far their best assortment of products. I just think it's so good. And they're, it's really cool because they made different dyes and stencils and stamps in the kit kind of work together in different ways. And I'm very excited about it. It's my favorite class project that um, I've ever done. So I'm, I'm excited and I'm excited that JC's part of it because I am the president of his fan club. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bridget is the secretary, she said. So we we are in good company here. So we're very excited that, that you're teaching also. So we get today to play with these inks that are just that are in that class kit, the Secret Garden class kit, along with some older products. But you could do today's technique with other um, Altenew inks too. That's right. Yeah, my intention with you know crafting together, Jennifer and I, is that these these techniques uh, overlap existing products that you have. Um, if you don't have the Blossom of Life die set, any of the Craft of Flower sets are perfect for these techniques. It's all color. It's all complement. Um, yeah, and it's 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 we're just focusing on techniques today, nothing specific on products, except for of course the this set of six inks that we have. Jennifer and I have so. Um, and the neat yeah. thing is these inks aren't. Like there's no green, like you said. So we're going to get creative. And that's what I feel like JC is really good at, a really creative approach to color and putting color on your card. So I'm excited to see um, what he can show us to do with these inks and really just create a really cool, unique looking card. So on, on my uh, screen, I have 
three, four, sorry, four die cut images, one of the larger ones. Yep, perfect. One of the outlines, or two of the outlines of okay. the small images, and we partially die cut, or I partially die cut, two of the leaves Okay. from the outline. I think we're both using brushed gold metallic card stock. Um, I use it for everything. I think this is now my third pack of this card stock. <laughs> um, I use a lot of the brushed silver too. Mm. I have those four images as Jennifer's working through those. And I'm um, she did so quickly. Uh, we also have the layers that coordinate with the stamp set, or I'm sorry, the die set. So I have, again, partial die cuts of the leaves and the other layers incorporated in the die set. And I just cut those from white cardstock. And um, like I said, if you're a fan of the Craft of Flowers series, I love starting with white cardstock. It's what I do most of the time when I'm creating these 3D bouquets. Um, I just I just like a little bit more control when it comes to my color palettes. I like to start at like my focal points, right? And for me, the focal points are the blooms, the flowers themselves. Um, I admire them in my garden and I look at those first and then look at the health of the leaves. Um, so that's usually how I like to start. I'm pulling out, I don't know what you have, Jennifer, but I use the sticky mat grid um, all the time when it comes to coloring my Oh, you have the 9 by 12 I'm afraid to get mine dirty. I haven't taken it out of the package yet. Me too, JC. Oh, baby. <laughs> Me too, JC. It's so Bring funny. it out. I don't want to ruin <laughs> I it. I love it. So I use it all a... the time. Obviously, mine is bright pink, but I I just can't. I can't yet. I'm not ready. Yet. I was like, they sell a pink one? So this is, a, <laughs> this is a, um, uh, the sticky mat from Altenew. I have the bigger one. He's got the smaller one. But it's nice because the back has some texture to it, so it's easier to peel off, but it does stay put as you're working, if you're working on, like, glass or something. Um, and it's made from the same material as a clear stamp, so you know it's just a little bit enough stick to hold something in place as you work on it. Yeah, and that'll definitely come into play as we work on like more of these intricate die cuts. I know some of these are like, depending on how hard you ink blend, you know, they're more prone to buckling. So that's why I like using okay. this sticky mat grid. It's perfect. Like watercolor, I work from lightest to darkest. I found that, okay. you know, it's the easiest way to blend colors um, as I'm coloring these florals. But I am going to start with a very light layer of lemonade stand right in the center of one of these blooms. And it is my preference to just leave a lot of um, a white highlight when ink blending. I think to me, it's like um, an equivalent of how the flowers or the sun hits the flowers. You know, that bright sunshine, it, it shows that there's life and that there's sunshine and brightness to the bouquet. Uh, so as I bring Lemonade Stand close to the edge, I do try to leave a little bit of a white space. I think that's something I do wrong. I fill the whole thing. And that's something that you really are good about is leaving that highlight, that white on the tip. Yeah. So if you're just joining, JC came up with a card and he's teaching me his ways because he's so good at using color creatively. It Unfortunately, his wife or his internet is not really cooperating. So his, he's on there, but small, and I'm just doing what he tells me to do because then I'll be great like he is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay. we've both ink blended lemonade stand. I'm going to put that away for now. So then, you know, color complement. I'm just, I like to move down analogous colors. So, you know, if you're going in order or in reverse rainbow order, right, red is next to yellow, orange is next to yellow. Um, so I, I try to stay within that realm of the color wheel, essentially. So you know, as I'm adding these colors to the center of the larger bloom, it adds a little bit of depth. And I'm not going to take it past Lemonade Stand, just a little halo of it, just so that there's a little bit of depth coming through. Which color are you using? Oh, sorry, that was uh, Blush Rose. And um, on this one, we'll take the ink a little bit further on the smaller bloom. So we're ending up with like a really nice, um, like a... Or more of an orangey because we're putting those two colors together. That's right. Um, you know, I when I was thinking about how to color this card, you know, inspired by things in my garden, I talk about a lot a lot about this flower, but it's the distant drums. Uh, I think it's heirloom roses who has the um, cultivar, 
but it's it's like this gorgeous mix of blush pinks coupled with apricot and as i color my flowers i really do try to think of you know how blooms look on the stalks themselves right you know nothing looks identical and as you get a bouquet you know flowers are going to hit the light differently and that all lends itself to like depth as i'm creating these bouquets on these cards because you know not only do these cards come at you like dimensionally but I want them to look very tactile as well. It's like something you could feel and something you can experience. Yes. I have to show these. These <laughs> yes. are two good examples. These he sent me and look at the detail. He, <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah. come on. That's just gorgeous. You need a these stamp very that close says, at hand in here. You need a stamp that says it's not a card. It's an experience, JC. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. We finished those base layers. So I'll move those over to the side and we'll work on the next layer. So these detail layers, you know, my intent is to give them a lot more depth than the base layers, right? Okay. Um, so we're going to go into more deeper palettes, a little bit more saturation. With this one, um, I'm going to work in more of a deeper palette. So the two I grabbed for the one that has less lines on it was uh, is a Lemonade Stand and Rotolite. So again, okay. working in color complement to give it a little bit more depth in the center. Right. And for these, I won't leave as much of a white highlight as I usually do. And so we want to go to town, right? Just go right. to town, put the ink down? Okay. <laughs> I like the phrase, just go to town. <laughs> Love it. So see how the, the grip mat is holding that there? So I don't have to, you know, hold it as we ink. And I'll tell you, one of the, JC said he usually starts with white cardstock and adds color. And I think that's why his cards look so... Um, like it looks so like so much like a masterpiece. I usually just start with colored cardstock and I just glue the layers together. And you can do that and get something like this that it's just, you know, has the color layers, but you're doing layering within the layering by adding the inks, which I need to do more of. That's right. Yeah. Um I definitely love to ink bled on top of colored cardstock. I just don't I don't have a collection. <laughs> um but now yeah. that I've started to slowly build what I have, um stunning like um there will be upcoming releases where I definitely use colored cardstock because I wanted sure. a much more deeper bloom. Um, I'm right. thinking things like hellebores, um, like deeper rose colors as well. I think just looks stunning on colored cardstock. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I try to make sure that everybody has white cardstock. You know, so I, I start. I try to make things that people are more accessible to other people as well. So white cardstock, of course, everybody's got it. So wonderful. So then on your bottom this one. This is can... fun. I want to do this every day. Uh, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. This one right here, Jennifer. Yes. I'm going to blend um, blush rose onto it. Blush rose. Then... Okay. Am I going just towards the center with the brush, blush rose or over the whole thing? I just kept it in the center again. Okay. Um, but just giving it a little bit more of that, how do I describe this color? Like that very warm terracotta feel to the center. Yeah. Wonderful. I wish yeah. the camera picked it up better because man, oh my goodness, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. <laughs> it's exciting to do that. We all do that though. Everybody out there does this. So it's good you show that because we all do that. We're like, oh my God, that's going to be so pretty. And then you go, it's going to be so pretty. All right. So the Rotolite, we do like centerish on this one. That's right. So it's going to give a lot more of that brownish, uh, brownish sort of hue. And it's funny because Bridget and I talk about like making brown a lot, right? Like it's, it's, uh, I know people try to avoid it, but I think it's completely necessary to know how to do it uh, because sometimes you'll want to use it to your advantage. Sometimes you don't want to use it to your advantage. But in this case, I want something with a lot of depth in the center. Um, and this, I know this flower will sit more towards the back. So that takes care of two things, right? Like the fold of the petal and also the fact that it's behind the other one. Uh, so okay. you get, right, the two for one, this sort of shadow deal. Um, yep. And now we'll work on the foliage elements. Um, I have them in order of leaves vertically. So here's one leaf, here's the second leaf, and then here's the third leaf that I have in my bouquet. Okay. 
Um, and because these are all the same image, this is how I sort of trick um, the die set to look like it includes more images, I guess, okay. is to omit and include different layers or mix them up in different ways, right? So we can mix them up by including or not including different layers, or we can include them or not include the different colors. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay. No, you're smart, man. Okay. <laughs> I never think to do this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm back on my ink blending tool, and this time I'll grab Honeydew. This one is sort of like a bright yellowish green, sort of like what sprouts look like as they emerge from seed, is how I um, relate to this color. I'm ink blending uh, Honeydew Glow on all of these, right? But I'm starting from okay. the base and leaving a white highlight all the way to the tips. Let's see, so honeydew glow, and then we're gonna move on, again, color complement. We're gonna move towards uh, the cooler side of things. Um, okay. So Jennifer showed Blue Horizon, absolutely stunning. And what I'm going to do is color Blue Horizon on one of the full shadow layer, or one of the full base layers and one of the detail layers for the second leaf. Perfect, yep, okay. you got it. I still leave a little um, honeydew glow highlight on that one, yep. Oh, that's so pretty. And that's what Look I love, that. right? Yeah, we got this beautiful di dimensional green just from, you know, just from knowing a little bit of color theory, right? So our, our honey, What's it called? Honey Dew Glow and our Blue Horizon make a beautiful um, meadowy green color. Yeah. Oh, that's so pretty. I love the sort of eucalyptus feel of it too. That's um, against these peachy blush like coral roses or um, open, open blooms. I don't know necessarily what they are. But uh, yeah, I, I just think it's such a beautiful palette just from colors I wouldn't normally pick myself, but I was I was shocked once I started mixing them together to see what everything looked yeah. like. You can learn two things from this. One is challenge yourself, right? Like challenge yourself to use colors that you normally wouldn't use for leaves or, you know, and come up with something like this, two completely different colors combined to come up with this. Or if you don't have a lot of colors of ink, make do with what you have and try combining colors with blending to get the color that you want. So everything that I have along the top here, I'll color with Teal Tempest. So that's the one that you have right now, yeah. And then one of the base layers, and then this last detail layer that we only have Honeydew Glow on. So let me show you what this color. So what we got here was combining these two colors. And again, these are colors that'll be in that uh, the all to new um secret garden retreat in the may in may but you could if you you know if you, you don't have those inks yet and if you want to try this try it with similar colors but look how you different these colors are but with jc's technique of layering them together with blending we're going to get new colors okay and then for the other two images i'll bring it almost touching look at that. <laughs> it is breathtaking that is gorgeous <laughs> I'm doing a little cool. dance here. Look at that. <laughs> that is stunning. And it's so fast, too, with the blending. You yeah. Know? Mm. Okay. Oh, so this is like a, it's giving like a, at the base here, it's giving kind of a hunter green vibe. That's right. Um, yeah. And I've, I'm always such a big fan of um, like evergreen type palettes, too. Um, so Altenus Fresh Leaf, I think, is perfect for beginners, right? But when you can mix it yourself, I think it gives a lot more depth. Now we'll start gluing. Um, okay. So we'll start assembling all these layers. I like, personally, I like to leave these partially glued, things like these outline images. Um, it gives a lot more of that uh, field of depth, depth of field texture uh, to my cards. I like to let the paper curl. Oh gosh, look at this. Look at this. That's, That's right. When you yep. add that yep. layer. Yep. That's stunning. But and you I, say only to do it like in the center kind of areas, not everywhere? I do. I like to leave my cardstock hanging off in some areas. I, I think it gives a lot of depth and dimension. Um, 
it makes it a little bit more fragile, but I like to describe it as delicate, you know? Um, I like it. Once you take it out of the card, you know, you can't really put it back in or take it out of the envelope. You can't really put the card back in the envelope. Um, so then you're but forced like to it. sort of display it, right? Um, <laughs> my little... <laughs> <laughs> you like your theory. You are forced to display it. <laughs> I like it. I like we're it. Learning, we're learning JC's secrets here today. You are forced <laughs> to display it. I love that. All right. So there we go. So, oh, I like that. I like these kind of little, how it kind of lifts up a little bit. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. It kind of, um, like you said, delicate, but it gives it kind of a floating feel. Like a yeah. Yeah. Um, I just like it because it, you know, it sort of reminds me how petals, you know, they, they don't sit flat on a paper. They they do truly come out at you. And um, it yeah. just, to me, it's all part of that experience when when you get a handmade card. Um, let's see. Okay, so. See, I would have taken this gold cardstock and I would have put the Altenew double-sided adhesive on the back of the brush gold cardstock and die cut it so I could just stick it on flat. But I do like this. See, I I learned something. I can take a nap now. <laughs> <laughs> I try to learn something every day so I can, uh, yeah. Reward yourself I with a nap. <laughs> Reward myself with a nap, yeah. Um, and All it's right. really original. I had a good idea. She said, what if you put it a little off center? And I think that's something you can yes. do especially with JC's technique of not having adhesive on all of it, I mean, that would create some extra dimension and interest as well. That's a great idea. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I don't know about you guys, but I was so surprised uh, when I opened this, how big it was. It is so it's huge. beautiful. It is amazing. I was like, okay, stop, like take a breath. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it fills a card. It's so pretty. It does. So I have one of the base layers with one of the outlines. And then with another outline, I have both the detail and the base layer coupled with that outline. Um, and again, I, I'm just applying glue just to the stem of the leaf, right? To the base of the leaf as I'm adding these layers. And the cardstock is going to lift and curl and just, you know, add dimension without adding um, dimensional foam tape, for example. Just something to bring, bring it up to the user or up to the recipient. Okay, so what goes behind this leaf that's attached to the flower? Or are you going to cut that off? I will eventually cut that one off. Um, okay. So yeah, it doesn't, so it doesn't matter. matter necessarily. Yep. Okay. So we will be giving haircuts. That's right. <laughs> we wanted to give you some ideas on how to integrate old and new together, especially with our 10th anniversary this month. Yep, exactly, exactly. And I think um, for the new people, right, like inks are your most indispensable tool. I think it's, you, you, you need inks and I understand like not everybody has all of them, right? I, as much as you want all of them, um, I think these techniques in today's video help really stretch what you have um, and still give you interesting dimensional blooms. And again, for me, they're inspired by blooms I have in my garden. So, you know, not every rose is red. Um, some of them are going to be apricot, sort of terracotta looking. Um, yeah, I think it's just, it's fun to see what you come up with. And I'm, I'm surprised, I, personally, I was surprised at how well these six inks work yeah. well together to make these really interesting blooms. So, and you can go through your stash and pick yeah. your, at home and pick six inks and challenge yourself to, to do some color mixing and see what you come up with. And I really love your idea, uh, JC of, I own on this one, we don't have the back layer to it, right? The, That's right. the solid That's right. layer. So it just adds, another look. It's fun to skip layers. And I need to do that more often. I think that's... Right. We're going to do, you know, we're going to talk to, through sort of my method here. I have my own class okay. um, where I dive into this over at Alta New Academy called El uh, Elements of Floral Composition. And I, I talk in oh. incredible detail about my methods, right, to crafting, um, especially for these floral arrangements. You know, Jennifer, like in my garden, roses don't grow into each other, right? So as I'm looking at the shape of these, um, I do try to make sure that my the flower centers and the stamens, pistils, they face away from each other, um, oh. just as if you would see them. And in addition to that, I try to give it some sort of shape and structure. Um, okay. So in this case, I've got sort of a rough triangle and I get that idea from the art of bonsai, right? Everything is sort of geometric and it has some 
beauty in in um, imperfectness. Um, okay. So as I'm doing that, I've got let's see the smaller flower towards the bottom, and it's facing this way away from the other one, um, and it has some sort of grouping and shape to it. Should I cut these little? Should I cut those off? I I cut mine off. Um, okay. I kind of I'm kind of curious to see how it would go for you if you left them on. Oh, um, <laughs> good timing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm do, doing what I'm told here. So, I'm yes. about to so, which goes on top? I like the smaller flower to go on top. Yeah. Um, and again, lessons from my garden. You know, your younger flowers, your smaller younger flowers are going to be more towards you, and your more open, full, big blooms are going to be more towards the back. And that's just how he's, that's what's sort of made sense to me as, as I make these. So that's why I've picked it like this. And I like mine to hang off the card as well. Cause again, I, oh yeah. Yeah. I rarely put I my cards in envelopes unless I'm mailing them. Um, or if I do put it in an envelope, I make sure that the envelope is enough to accommodate for my card. So <laughs> card first, envelope second for me. Um, <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and then this is how I like to frame my leaves. Um, I like odd numbers when it comes to foliage elements. I'm tucking the leaves in behind the flower elements um, and trying again to get a rough triangular shape. Um, everything radiates out from a center of the, of the bouquet. Um, so it gives that firework appearance, right? That instant impact, yeah. instant stunner. Um, just I like, will forever call this the fireworking method. Yes, yep. And that is totally in my approach is like a firework bouquet. There are lines that radiate Look out from the center. <laughs> and I love your stems. I love your stems on there. They look yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I think I like it's just little... another wonderful linear element, you know, something to really guide your eyes outwards, right? Um, so, yeah, and I... I don't glue anything down right away. So um, now that I've got this idea, this is where I use the glad press and seal if I have it. Um, mine are very dirty right now, so I won't even show that. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go ahead and start gluing these. If you like instant dimension foam tape or foam tapes in general, this is also where I like to use them. Um, yeah, I'll just don't start gluing these glue. down. Look at That's how that, I mean, these, the gold just floats. So what's cool, what I was so excited about when JC sent text me a picture of this is how like um dreamlike it looks yeah. and it's so different than the package I had so I was thinking of something more graphic and he just made it just dreamy looking just, and your leaves are curling because you did you follow yes. his technique it looks yes. like your leaves are curling and you did nothing you just didn't glue them down and you have that extra dimension it's gorgeous yes uh, let's see. So you have your sentiment too, the just a note one. That one comes from the stand set. So you're using one from this set, right? That's right. I have the thanks one. I'm so sorry. Thanks. It's probably so gritty on the camera. No, it's okay. Yeah. It looks gold. Is it gold? That's right. I have the gold offset layer on it. And then I cut two layers of white cardstock um, for that little bit of dimension on it. And so... Bridget, am I allowed to show the whole sentiment set from the class kit? Yes. Yep. The picture okay. is on the website. So, yep. So this is, these are the, this is one of the things I was most excited about with the class. You get these in the class kit, the um, secret garden retreat click kit. Uh, there's sending sunshine. Hello, friend, you. And then there's just a note, but my dyes are over there. Oh, so JC like has them. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Upside there down, though. Go. There we go. Let me. I don't oh, there we go. I yep. My sentiment, I think my sentiment fits like here ish um, on top of the other flower. And I I have like layers of this foam tape on mine to make sure that it definitely stands up and far beyond the um, bouquet. Because I mean, in the end, the flowers are nice, but the sentiment is really important as well. Yeah. Um, so I. I do try to make sure that if I am tucking it behind something that it's still complete and legible and still um, is obvious. But in this case, since there's so much gold going on and the flowers are so big, 
Um, I am going to try to put mine on top just like you are, it seems, um, to really make sure that it's showcased on this large bouquet. Um, so let's see, I'm going with hello and I'm taking somebody's recommendation of I'm going to put sending sh sunshine on the inside of the card. Nice. Yeah. So Wonderful. when they open it up, they see that and it's just going to be hello on the front. You're <laughs> gifted in both ways. Okay, so where should I put it? Let's should see. I like that area where you first had it next to your first leaf. That's a great place right for there? it. Mm -hmm. Or the mirror side of that. So if you have it next to your other two leaves, that's also perfect. Exactly. My um, method when it comes to sentiment placement is, again, I think of a triangle again. So if I were to put my finger on the center of um, each of the flowers and trying to create like this smaller isosceles <laughs> triangle. Ah. Um, so that it's right, because your intent when you look at flowers is to look at the center. That's what bees do. That's what hummingbirds do. Um, so I try to um, mirror that in my cards is I'm looking at the center of my flowers. So the sentiment should be close to those areas um, because it's where the nectar is. It's where the good stuff is. It's where the, all the healthy stuff is. There you look go. There you go. That's my secret. It's where the nectar <laughs> is. Look at that. <laughs> How, what is the name of your class? Because I haven't taken it, and I have, I, I'm, I have an issue with that. What's, what's the name <laughs> of your is class? It is elements of floral it. composition. Yeah. <laughs> say, say that again. I'm sorry. Oh no, you're right. Elements of floral composition. Um, so that's another thing. Not only blending, but inking, stamping, layering them together as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so you can stamp two colors on top of each other to get a new color. Yeah. That's right. And it that's was. Great. I'm going to try to show it. I know it's not going to look fabulous, but it was the Sunflower Daisy stamp set because uh, okay. there's an outline in it. Um, so I could get a true sense of how these colors look on top of each other. You know, inks have their little transparent quality. So yeah, anything, any of your dye inks or your fresh dye ink sets uh, from Altenew, you know, see where you where you can go with them. And all you need is a little bit of knowledge about analog analogous colors specifically. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that we just did that. So <laughs> thank you. Okay. This this might have to happen again. <laughs> I think so. I learned so and I made something like I see cards like this and I love them and I'm drawn to them, but I I it just I'm too like um uh, straight and narrow, practical, I guess, like obvious maybe. And this is fantastic. So thank you, JC. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. A big thank you to JC and Bridget for doing this live with me. I look forward to doing future ones. If you want to ch catch the full version of this live and learn much, much more, I will link to it at the end here. I have everything we talked about linked in the description below, including a link to where you can find more of JC's work. Thanks so much for watching as always, and we'll see you again soon with another video.